I love playing in small places like, you know, anywhere from 50 to 400 seats where I can really look at the audience because I use it also as a tool, not just performance, I use it as a tool to see how my songs and the moments in them are being received. Thanks for coming today, Steve. Hey, it's a pleasure to be here. Thanks, Kevin. Thanks for having me. So how do you climb inside a performance to give the best you can to the crowd in front of you? Well, you know, as I think almost any performer would say, one thing is you try not to bring whatever's going on in your world onto the stage. It's like work. <laughs> unless it's like something like you're really joyous and you're really, yeah. you know. But if you're having a tough time or like something's going on, it, it's somewhat going to affect your performance no matter what you do, but mm -hmm. I think the old, the show must go on. Uh, it's all about the audience to me. And so to me, <clears throat> there's a lot of things that I can be cognizant of, but there's also a lot of things I have to ignore. And, and the, the two that occur to me the most are, one, when you show up at a show and there's not as many people as sure. you wanted there to be. And you're sitting there, let's do the worst scenario, there's 12 people in a 100-seat place. It's happened to every, sing, every single performance. Sure has, you yeah. know, Those 12 people are there to see a show. And I think it's you owe it to them to do the best show that you can. You might make a little joke about the fact that, you know, did you guys get these tickets like years ago? Because, you know, obviously you got <laughs> the best seats in the house, you know. <laughs> um, but it's time to do a show, you know. And the same with I don't think it's, it's your place to bring all your troubles up on onto the stage in a in a literal sense in other words obviously it might permeate how you sing certain songs mm -hmm. how you're feeling but you can channel that into a realness that still works for the audience it, it can also help you pick what kind of songs you want to sing that night absolutely yeah, if you want to exorcise whatever kind of demons you're you're dealing with or a great sadness yeah um it with how important is it for you to see the reaction on the faces of the people you're singing to? You know, or do you look over the head? For me, it actually is really important. I've never understood how <coughs> big famous people who do 10,000, 20,000 seaters, yeah. where they really can't see anybody, they feel it. But I love playing in small places like, you know, anywhere from 50 to 400 seats where I can really look at the audience, because I use it also as a tool, not just performance, I use it as a tool to see how my songs and the moments in them are being received. So if I have a song where they're supposed to laugh right about now, yeah, I'm not going to get 100%, but I want 80%. You know, mm -hmm. Or if I have a song where it's the, oh, moment, you know, and everybody's supposed to either have a tear in their eye or like hold them back to tears, whatever it is, I want to be able to see that. What if it's going? <laughs> Excuse me. Sure. What if it's going flat? What if you're if you're putting it out there and it's not working? Uh, how do you reboot? And well, keep it going. <clears throat> the good news is that a song is usually three or four minutes long, so <laughs> you do have the opportunity to come up with another song. Yes. You know, and maybe uh, you know. Sometimes you have to shift what you were planning to play next. Like I am not a big fan of set lists. Now, if you're in a big band, you know, you got lighting cues and all, you pretty much, a lot of people play the same darn set every night, especially that are yes, at all absolutely. famous. Or they just, you know, uh, even if they're local, they still get a set list so everybody knows what to play next. I play solo more often than not and with a guitar player once in a while. But I never like to decide on anything but the first song and the last song. And what do you let? It so sounds like you let the crowds flow. Let them to direct take where you're going. Yeah, let them direct the effort. You know, because I, I use the reaction to the last song to somewhat decide what the next song yeah. ought to be. And especially this this comes uh, to to bear when I do songwriter shows where I'm playing with two other songwriters sometimes. Yeah, and even that's a show. And sometimes. Some songwriters in those situations forget that, like, oh, I was going to do, like, my big, quiet, slit-your-wrist sort of heavy-duty song. 
Well, well guess what? The last two guys just did that. Yeah. You need to right. pick it up, whether uh -huh. you like it or not. Sorry, right. you drew the short straw this time. <laughs> you know? But it is the audience is on a journey with you, and, and I think you need to take them on one and, and be just be cognizant that they're there. Because without them there, there is no show. Yeah. You're playing in your room. Yeah. It can be fun playing in your room too. Absolutely. Do you ever get <laughs> you ever get in a moment where you need to go into playing in a room mode to be able to communicate the emotion you want to get across? There are some songs I get more inside the song than others um, in order to deliver it well. Um, usually, those moments are not premeditated for me. They're like I've written some song that really uh, touches me in an autobiographical sense, mm -hmm. you know. And suddenly I have a moment where I'm like way more emotional than I was planning to be because the song took me to a place that comes across to the audience. That's not a bad thing, though, as long Unless as you don't you start... break down and like right. be unable to, you know, deliver it. But yeah. I, I do love when that happens. But you can't plan that, I don't think. I mean, no, I, it's, it's like a spontaneous a... reaction. Yeah, that would be odd. Like, I'm going to cry now. But in that sense, by the way, it is easier sometimes to deliver an emotional song that isn't directly attributable to your life. You, you know, can there control was some, a little better? There is some fiction involved. You can find that little window where you crawl into the character and can deliver it with passion and conviction, but where you're not going to go over the deep end. That's, Whereas yeah. I, can think of, I, think, I can think of some songs that I've written that I hardly ever sing because they're just way too... Too hard? Too personal for me. Oh, yeah. which one? Name one of them. Well, okay, like, uh, you know, the song Grown Men Don't Cry, which has a verse about my dad in it, yeah. about my dad being gone all the time, being a slave to his job, and then he died, and then there I am standing at his grave and um, talking to the wind. It's absolutely it's, true. It's the way this, that, that is absolutely true. I never have trouble singing that for some reason. I can just get through it and, and sing it and deliver it with passion, but not a problem. I have this other song, without going into the whole song, but it's called Father's Day. Yeah. And the chorus is, I wish you'd been my dad. I wish we'd spent more time. I wish you hadn't gotten mad when I tried to speak my mind. When I needed you. You didn't come through and I never understood. Because back then to all my friends, you were the hero of the neighborhood. But I wish you'd been my dad. I cannot, even to sing that chorus, I get all like, Oh, well, that it's goes into too, a real place. Yeah, more so than the other one is reporting facts. They're yeah. emotional, but somehow I can, I can easily make it through that. Whereas okay. that other song, I've never sung it live. That's an unmet need that never got met. There you go. Yeah. You know. Uh. So and maybe sometime I should just try it. <laughs> <laughs> I declare on this show uh, that someday you. I will sing that song. Well, it's a beautiful song. Now, you are such an emotive singer. How do you get yourself up again and again and again when you, when you have to perform so that you're not just phoning it in? Do you, do you have to psych yourself up in your head? Well, you know, to me... The, 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 the place I go always has to do with the songs. Mm -hmm. And there are a lot of singers, you know, who are amazing singers. And I'm not saying they don't go to a place of the song, but I think a lot of singers go to a place of the voice and the singing and their tone and all that first, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. And then th they do think about what they're singing, hopefully. I'm, like, never thinking about my tone. I, pro I probably should. <laughs> But breathing, and I'm always thinking of the lyric, and You're, delivering that lyric in a, in the most emotional way I can. Yeah, because from what I get from you when I hear you sing is the, is the believability of the the story and the the message you're putting forward. Well, and I think that's another good case for me calling myself a songwriter slash singer. I love singing, but I'm a songwriter first. Yeah, because because it's about it's about what you're trying to communicate. Yeah, and I mean, in that sense, from a performance point of view, it is t timely when you choose to do a song in a set and when you're um, in a certain kind of mood to deliver this song. And I do take that in consideration. But again, I also take into consideration where the audience is at. 
what do you like the audience to be upbeat or do you like to get them really immersed in the the somberness of an important message what's best you know one thing i try to do with that is because i have a lot of songs that are you know fairly heavy duty yeah but i try to use a humorous patter before those songs or after them to kind of bring a little bit of levity to the situation, you know, just to, um, so I'll tell like a hilarious, well, hopefully hilarious story before some really heavy duty song. And that way people are going into it with a, with a yeah. just like you have that smile on your face now. Uh -huh. they're, they're going into it with that same deal. And then somehow when you hit them really hard with like a pretty, it's, they're not already, oh, God, and then you're hitting them with that. Yeah, for some reason, that works, having the the, the, the calibration, the up and down, the yeah. emotion. The yin-yang sort of deal. Well, tell us a little bit about this song you're going to do for us. I'm going to do a song called This Is My Day. It's on a new record that I just put out. Um, and it's my notion that every day is up to you how it's going to turn out. Like there, there are certain things that can happen to us that are going to ruin anybody's day. Yeah. But a lot of things that we say, that ruin my day, a lot of it's just like how we reacted to something that happened to us, you know. Um, years ago, I read a book, uh, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, yes. Stephen yeah. Covey. And, and number four or something was, you can't control what's going to happen to you in your world, but hopefully you can get better and better at controlling your reaction to the things that happen to you. That's what I was thinking of when I, when I wrote that song. A big lesson, great song. Looking forward to it. Thanks for being here today. Oh, pleasure to be here. Thank you. up to the sound of the pounding of a hammer. There ought to be a law about working on Saturdays at 7.15. I looked outside to a cloudy sky and I went to make my coffee. Damn, I'm out of cream. Now I could just crawl back under the covers, cross this day off of my calendar. If this is how it's gonna be. Or I could say, wait a minute, world, I'm taking back morning there's no way you're gonna get to me no this is my day this is my day this is my day and i make it what i want to this is my day this is my day this is my day oh yeah. i think i'll start by walking outside take a long deep breath there's a million miracles out there if you take the time to notice. I got eyes to see and a heart that beats and money in my pocket. There's no time for feeling hopeless. I could call a friend or catch a movie or drive myself to Graceland or spend all day in this coffee shop. I could sit here and worry about everything that's wrong with my life or I could thank God for what I've got. This is my day. This is my day. This is my day. And I will make it what I want to. This is my day. This is my day. Now this is my day to give myself some credit. I'm not perfect, but that's okay. Without an ounce of guilt, I'm going to say, this is my day. This is my day. Oh, now this is my day. This is my day. This is my day. And I'm going to make it what I want to. This is my day. This is my day. This is my day. And tomorrow too, yeah. there's a million miracles out there if you take the time to notice. This is my Yeah, 
like to try me out a life in the stars My friends all say I need a place to air out my heart So I'm moving to Mars You know this life has been crazy Sometimes I think I'm not really here Every time I turn